All right, welcome back to Way of the Wrench. Today we're going to talk about these scary guys, otherwise known as spark plug wires. And uh, in true how to be a gearhead fashion, we're going to go a little bit more in depth, make some cool connections and really make it stick up here. So stay tuned. So first off, let's start really easy, really simple. This is what a spark plug wire looks like. So it looks like a thicker kind of cushy, rubbery feeling wire, and it's going to be found on the top of your motor. One end is going to have a long rubber boot. This is the end that generally goes down into the motor and connects to your spark plug. And the other end is going to go to your distributor or to your coil pack if you have that. Now you don't usually find a single spark plug wire by itself. You usually find them in sets. And uh, so something like this on the top of a distributor, you're going to have one spark plug wire going around the perimeter for each and every single spark plug or cylinder that you have. Now on the top of your distributor, you're going to have one of these spark plug wires going right to the center of the distributor. Now this one is always going to go to your ignition coil like this. Now another thing you might notice about your spark plug wires is that they are all different lengths. And the reason for that is they all come from your distributor or your ignition coil, but they have to go to different cylinders on the motor, which are in different spots in the engine bay. So some have to be longer and some have to be shorter. All right, you might be thinking, but wait, I don't have a distributor. I've got a newer car. I've got one of these guys. Uh, well, first off, what do you have, a 1989 Plymouth Voyager? Ew, like seriously, forget to put your emergency parking brake on a hill and leave that thing. Uh, but if you've got one of these guys, you still got spark plug wires. You just don't have an ignition coil because the coil's built into here and you have spark plug wires going to each spark plug. And then lastly, you lucky ducks that have newer cars, you might have one of these ignition coils. And um, so, one of the improvements with these ignition coils is that we don't have to have those spark plug wires, so you're not going to see them. Um, however, this boot is taking up that, that space and sending that spark to your spark plug. And uh, they do come off, they are replaceable, and they can wear out. So we'll talk about that when we get to inspection. The next logical question is, what does this thing do? Well, this is simply a conductive wire. We are taking the extreme high voltages created from our ignition coil, which is on this end, and can it get all the way to our spark plug? in a perfect time and make a spark in our power stroke and get our motor running. So whether you are using stock wires that came from factory or whether you are spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on high performance spark plug wires, keep in mind, don't be fooled. As long as your engine is getting a spark for every single power stroke that it's asking, then this is doing its job. All right, so far, spark plug wires seem very simple. We just have to have a conductive wire to transmit our high voltage from our ignition coil all the way to our spark plug. Seems pretty simple, right? But then why are we not just using a regular wire? Well, this is where we have to go in a little bit more depth detail and it's gonna make this information stick really well. All right, so a couple of weeks ago, I posted a video on relays and how they work. And we also talked about Faraday's law of induction. And that states, whenever we put electricity through a coil of wires, we get an electromagnetic field created. Now, one thing we didn't talk about is this electric magnetic field can also cause something called electromagnetic interference, which essentially means any other wires or sensors or anything that's on a low frequency, like an AM radio, can actually pick up on that electromagnetic field and it can disturb and cause glitches and all kinds of issues. And um, this is one of the reasons why we can't just use a simple wire for our spark plug wires. I've got a radio here that I have put on the AM frequency or the AM band and uh, the reason for that is the frequency we're generating here is going to be in the lower amounts which is what uh, AM transmits on so that's why we'll be able to pick it up here. And um, I've got my coil of wire with a power supply hooked up at 12.7 volts and these connections here when I make that connection I'm basically sending 12.7 volts to our coil here and what I want you to do is listen to the radio and hear the electric magnetic interference and it'll sound like every time I make that electromagnet on and off you should hear clicking or static of some sort and this is the signal or the interference that will have all kinds of issues with your car with all kinds of sensors and that kind of stuff. And here I've almost moved it one foot away and we're still having a massive amount of electromagnetic interference. So now imagine that interference affecting all your sensors and other wires in your cars. So we have to have some way to fix this. How do they do that? If spark plug wires can't be just regular wires because they would cause electromagnetic interference, then um, what's in these guys? Well, let's cut one apart and find out. The outside layer is going to have a layer of silicone. Silicone is a great rubber because it is 
resistant to abrasion and moisture and heat, which is a big one because these are right next to our motors. Now, right underneath that layer, you're going to see these fiberglass strands that are in there, and those are kind of weaved in here, and they are preventing the rubber from stretching so that we can't pull on a wire and have it kind of damage the internals. And then the next layer underneath that is this rubber here. Now this insulating rubber is going to prevent yet more heat from getting to the inside and it also acts as a barrier for our electric magnetic interference that will be happening and trying to come in or out from our wires. And then, now this is going to be really hard to see, but this one right here, see the little wire just coming off of it there. This is our stainless st steel wire that's wrapped all the way around our core and uh, this is going to act as a resistor and our conductive element. So this is what our voltage is coming down. And then right in the center here we've got a bunch of strands of fiber. This is going to be nylon or Kevlar based fibers and they're going to be impregnated with carbon and uh, once again this is going to be acting as a resistor and a conductor for our high voltages. All right, so now that we know a little bit more about these spark plug wires, um, how do we inspect them? How do we know whether they're working in our car? Well, the first thing I would do before you even take them out of the vehicle is just do a visual inspection. Um, take a look at the rubber boots. Are they old and cracked and brittle? Um, not wanting to be really flexible anymore? Same thing with the wires. Can you move them around? Or do they feel hard and crunchy? Um, in this case, this thing is no good because we've got a big crack and so that sheath is compromised and this is where it's going to be easier for electricity to go. Remember, electricity is lazy and it likes to take the path of least resistance. So if it's easier to jump here to the top of a valve cover or an exhaust manifold rather than continuing on through this wire to your spark plug, then it's always going to do that. I've got another wire here. You can visibly see a color difference there. and. Uh, this is where that spark plug wire has gotten too close to an exhaust manifold or if I saw this color in a smaller kind of patch um, I would suspect that it's arcing somewhere under the top of the motor and then you're, you're looking at a burnt silicone outer layer. These spark plug wires are not meant to last forever. This is in my opinion a consumable item that should be replaced probably within at least five years so they don't last forever they do break down and eventually start giving you grief so i would consider this a tune-up item if you haven't done these in about four or five years just put them into your tune-up package and replace them all right so another very common thing to do is to measure the resistance of your spark plug wires using a multimeter however there's a problem with that because there's different types of spark plug wires and they give a wide range of different resistances so that can really kind of be quite confusing so there's three types of spark plug wires out there you have your solid core you have your carbon core and your spiral core and here's what the differences are all right, so solid core spark plug wires are gonna have very low resistance. We're talking one ohm to maybe five or 600 ohms per foot. And um, those guys have very low resistance so that they can have the maximum amount of electricity and voltage and current going to our spark plug. Um, however, there is a consequence. We are also gonna have the maximum amount of electromagnetic interference. So you won't find these on common cars. You're gonna find them on high performance vehicles that have almost no computers and no electric sensors. So we're talking old, old sprint cars, V8 cars, uh, racing applications only. The second type of spark plug wire that you may have on your vehicle and it's very common is the carbon core. And what it's made up of is carbon impregnated Kevlar or nylon fibers. And um, this increases the resistance quite high, but as a benefit that actually lowers the electromagnetic interference. So a lot of car manufacturers put there on their vehicles uh, because of that and because it's cheaper to make. So very common to see. Uh, expect when you go to measure a spark plug wire with this type to be around three to 8,000 ohms per foot. All right, now the third type of spark plug wire that you may find, and it's uh, more commonly found in aftermarket and newer vehicles, is the spiral core spark plug wires. Now, what the manufacturers have decided to do is to create a spark plug wire that can limit the amount of electromagnetic interference, but also lower the resistance found per foot in these spark plug wires so that you get a bigger, hotter spark right to our spark plug. And um, the way they do that is they still have the carbon core but they now spiral, usually a stainless steel tiny coil of wire all the way around uh, from end to end, and this accomplishes that. So it reduces the resistance because we're providing another pathway for electrons to flow through, um, yet the way it's made up actually kind of suppresses the EMI. 
So very commonly found on newer cars and aftermarket. And uh, if you're measuring those wires, expect to see something a lot lower, like 100 to 500 ohms per foot of resistance. Okay, so I've got a set of four spark plug wires here. You can see I'm holding it on the spark plug boot end, and uh, you can see they're different lengths. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna measure the length write it down and then I'm going to measure the resistance and write it down and so we can talk about that after. Right onto the multimeter, so we're checking for resistance, which is our omega and ohms, and uh, we're checking quite high, so we're gonna go probably 20,000 ohms and see what we get there. Black lead is in the comm, red is in the port that's red, and it's got the little omega symbol. All right, now that we have our wires laid out from shortest to longest and we've measured them and recorded the lengths in inches and we've also measured the wires with a multimeter for the resistance in ohms, uh, we can learn a lot from these numbers here. So the first thing is noticing that as the wire starts to get longer, the resistance starts to go up as well. And um, so that's telling us that we've got a good set of spark plug wires here. If we ever saw one of these very, very, very low resistance or very, very extremely high, and it's not really matching the pattern, then that's gonna be a sign that that spark plug wire is no good. And realistically, the whole set needs to be changed out. Now this is also telling us due to the lower resistances that this is a newer type of probably aftermarket spark plug wires, which are the spiral core type. Remember spiral core spark plug wires should have roughly three or 400 ohms to about 3000 ohms per foot. And so if you take this, which is almost two feet and you double those numbers, we're within that with 850. And each of them tend to match what their lengths are. All right, so if you're gonna diagnose whether you have good or bad spark plug wires, the first thing you gotta realize is if you have a bad spark plug wire, then that means you are not getting a spark all the way down into a certain cylinder, and um, the fuel that is going into that cylinder is not getting ignited, we're not getting burned, we're, we're missing a power stroke, and they call that a misfire. So depending on your vehicle, that misfire will be easier or harder to find. Now, if you have a 1996 and newer vehicle, that means it has OBD2 systems. So first thing I would do if you had a newer car like this uh, is to check for a check engine light. If you have a check engine light, then hook up your OBD2 scan tool and see which cylinder is showing or reporting a misfire. Now, if you have any of your car and you want to be able to figure out if there's a misfire or not, uh, there's another way around it. So uh, if you've got an older car or you don't have access to an OBD2 scan tool, you can still diagnose your car. It just takes a little bit more effort. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a power balance test. So just like we did in our other video, uh, we are going to have the vehicle running. And as we pull one spark plug wire from the spark plug, listen to the motor, see if it starts to shake and vibrate more or the RPMs drop very slightly. And uh, if you notice that, then that means that spark plug wire was working. There was a spark getting to that cylinder. If when you pull a spark plug wire off, there's absolutely no change in the, in the engine, the way it runs and RPMs, then that means that that cylinder is not getting that spark. Uh, but it does not tell you if it's a spark plug wire yet. So right now we're just trying to find out which cylinder is having the problem. So let's just simulate a couple of those. So when we go to do our power balance test and pull the spark plug wire off of the spark plug while it's running, uh, you have to realize that there is a good 15 to 20,000 volts that could come into you instead of going through the car. So you don't just take your bare hands and pull the cord off. Uh, you want to grab yourself a tool like this, very cheap, five to ten bucks, and it's basically insulated handles and insulated tips, and these are called spark plug pliers. And they allow you to be able to get down really as low as you can down on that boot, and when you grab it and 
twist and pull up, you can take it off the spark plug, as opposed to yanking on the wire, which basically will rip out the internals and make this wire useless. Now, another thing you may experience on your travels on how to become a gearhead is the being zapped by an ignition system. So you may forget to use your spark plug pliers or may have something disconnected and somebody cranks the car and you get a good zap from your ignition system. So not only will it fill you full of life and joy and put a smile on your face while you jump around for a bit, uh, Keep in mind, it's not going to kill you. It uh, is extremely high voltages, but very, very low amperages, and amperage is the one that kills you. So, uh, keep in mind, if you've got a pacemaker or a heart condition, maybe that's not the case for you, but in most cases, it's just going to give you a really good zap, give you a funky little dance, and uh, something to talk about with your buddies. Now, another gearhead tip. Uh, just because I am going into great detail in all of these specific parts and making a great base for you to understand and go forward and fix things in your car, uh, realize that being a good gearhead is also taking that theory and using your brain to figure out differences in different cars because not every car is exactly the same. For example, this 2003 Toyota Tacoma still has coil packs, yet it's kind of transitioning into coilover plug. So what that means is there's one coilover plug on one side of the V6 engine for the three cylinders, and the other side of the engine still requires a spark plug wire to go over. So it's kind of like a hybrid coil pack coilover plug. But um, taking from some theory, we can understand that and, and go forward. Let me show you what I mean. So right here on this side of the motor, we've got three of these coilover plugs. Uh, the, the spark plug is right below this for this side. However, there's still one terminal that's acting kind of like a coil pack where this spark plug wire has to travel to the other side. And there's three of these normal spark plug wire boots that go onto this side. So kind of a weird hybrid. All right, so I'm gonna start up my truck right now and I'm gonna use my spark plug pliers and I'm gonna grab way down here on this black boot as low as I can and give it a little twist as I'm pulling up. And I want you to listen to the motor. Hopefully you can hear the sound and the changes and um, you can see how much it vibrates. And I will put a camera back up on the um, tachometer inside the dash so we can kind of splice the two together so you can see it. Definitely more vibrations. Hopefully the camera picks it up on the top. I'm gonna to put it back on. And then all you do is you just continue to the next cylinder and the next cylinder and note that there is a change. There's more vibration. Something happens when you pull it off. Any spark plug wires you pull off and there's absolutely no change, then that's a pretty big hint that that spark plug wire is not getting the electricity to the spark plug. Uh, still could be something else, like a fouled spark plug or something before the spark plug wire, but it definitely helps narrow it down. All right, now let's say that your gearhead skills and ears are not in tune yet with how minor the vibrations and RPM drop was. So if you can't figure it out that way, you can also just take it out with the engine off find a, the same size spark plug, put it down in there so that it is connected to it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna basically put this against the ground somewhere on the motor, somewhere metal, unpainted, and look for a spark jumping there. If you've got a spark jumping there, then that means that spark plug wire is good. If it's not, or it's intermittent, then uh, that's telling you a heads up, the spark plug wire is no good. Just make sure you got a good connection between these two. Now we're not gonna wanna run our motor too long like this, but uh, running at uh, 30 seconds or so, each cylinder to figure out whether that's working or not, not a big deal. And um, keep in mind, we've kept the spark plug down in the, the original spark plug down in the motor. So we're not worried about any kind of fuel coming up and any issues that way. We're just supplying an extra spark plug. Now, you're obviously not gonna to wanna to run this too long because we're still getting fuel pumped into that cylinder. It's just not getting ignited, so um, don't run it for too long. But uh, uh, if you're running another 30 seconds a minute, just to check and see if there's a spark or not, it, you're good. Uh, just don't run it for too much longer than that. Now, one thing to note, and this is kind of a common problem, especially with people that are still learning um, how to do this kind of stuff and replacing spark plug wires, very common thing to put the wire onto the spark plug, yet it's actually not on. 
when it goes on, you should be pushing down pretty hard and you should feel a click, like a solid kind of thunk. And um, very often when I'm trying to diagnose problems with people's cars that have just done something like this, is to just push down on all of the spark plugs and you may find one or two or all of them click, uh, meaning that they weren't hooked in. All right, it's a really common problem for people not to put their spark plug wires down properly and make a good connection to the distributor or to the spark plug. And um, so when you put it on, it's not just putting it on and moving on to the next one. You actually have to physically push this down and your finger and you should be hearing like an audible click. So I'm gonna be quiet so you guys can hear it. If you don't hear that click and you don't feel it click under your finger when you're pushing them down, uh, that means it wasn't put on properly. Uh, common thing I find when I'm trying to fix somebody's car, it's not running right and they've just done something like a tune-up and change these spark plug wires, is to go around and push on every single one of these. And if I can get a couple to click, or sometimes all of them click, that tells me we're having some problems there. So as for inspecting these, I know these are less than six months old, so I know they're good. Um, but remember that the key thing is these spark plug wires aren't meant to last forever. They're kind of a consumable tune-up item. So if it's been five years over, 100,000 kilometers since you've changed these, these, these should be getting changed. So that's your first go-to. Uh, after that, remember we're doing a visual inspection. So are the rubber silicone sleeves still pliable? There's no cracks. Are the boots cracked and starting to come apart and crumbling? Uh, visibly, is there any burn marks or any cracks or any little black singe spots where it's sitting next to something? Um, if it's next to an exhaust manifold where it gets really hot, look for any discoloration of the rubber, etc. cetera. Uh, so in this case, visibly, these look great. So after my initial diagnosis, maybe I've looked on my scan tool and noticed that I have a cylinder that's misfiring, and then that's prompted me to do a power balance test, and then maybe even an external spark plug plugged in test, and I'm still not getting a spark. That's pretty confidently saying that that spark plug wire is no good. Now, we don't just change one wire or two wires at a time. You get the whole set, and that kind of goes back to their consumables. So if one or two are gone, the other ones are gonna be going soon. So always change them in sets. Okay, kind of back to our talk about electromagnetic interference is the use of wire looms. So if you'll notice, these spark plug wires are not just bundled together and zap strapped together to something else here. Uh, they've got these things called wire looms and that just helps separate these spark plug wires so that they're not right next to each other. And that also reduces the chances of uh, a spark plug jumping to another one or causing interference. It also kind of makes them look nice. So if you don't have them, you can uh, buy aftermarket versions of them so you can pretty up your engine bay, especially if you got a nice cool car, cool muscle car, etc. So a really great strategy to not mix up where the spark plug wire goes or to what cylinder is to only ever take off one spark plug wire at a time. So whether you're taking it off to measure the resistance or you're taking it off to put a new spark plug wire in its place, uh, it's a great strategy to do one at a time and you'll never forget where it goes. However, if you take them all off at once, or if you're doing something like a new motor rebuild, things like that, uh, then you have to learn about something called firing order. So the best way I can explain firing order is that the engineers design these vehicles, these motors, to run in a certain way that minimizes vibration and kind of maximizes how smooth the power is getting transferred to the vehicle. The best way I can explain this is if we had a four cylinder car and all four cylinders were getting a spark and a power stroke all at the same time, the motor would run really rough. It would have lots of power from that power stroke all at once. And then it would be a couple strokes of the internal motor parts moving around where there wasn't any power developed. So it would feel very much like a boom, chugga -chugga, boom, chugga -chugga, boom, chugga -chugga, boom, chugga -chugga. and it's uh, not a great way to have a vehicle run uh, or last. So engineers design these engines to run smoother by changing and alternating which cylinder goes after each other one. Uh, so for example, instead of having it just one, two, three, four, you might have one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, and that would be that motor's very specific firing order. Now, firing order is really easy to figure out these days. You take the year make model of your car, 2003 Toyota Tacoma, type it into Google and it'll spit out a drawing. Best way is looking for image and it'll show you the motor. It'll show you the front of the motor, which is where the fan is and uh, where all the timing belts and belts and external belts are. Uh, and then it'll show you what cylinder is which number. And then beside it, you'll see a string of numbers like one, four, three, two with little dashes in between. And that's your firing order. So for example, on this 2003 Toyota Tacoma, this is the front of the motor where the fan and the belts are and cylinder one is the passenger side. And then it just alternates one, 
cylinder two, three, four, five, six. And when I look for the actual firing order, this is the first time I've seen this in a while, the firing order is actually in order. So the firing order for this motor is one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, and it just keeps repeating. And hey, that's another thing about being a gearhead. You're always learning. I, I didn't know what the firing order was on this, and I'll probably never forget it because it's in order. That's a, that's a rare one. Usually they jump around quite a bit. All right, now let's say that you didn't take the spark plug wires off one at a time, and you have no idea where they're supposed to go now because you've done that. Don't worry, there's a way to figure this out. So, as long as you haven't removed the distributor from the motor and put it back in, then uh, this will work for you. Uh, if you have done that, that'll have to be for a video later, and that's delving deeper into the rabbit hole, but it is doable. So, at this point, you need to figure out where the number one cylinder post is, and that's pretty easily identified right here by this one. Now, we're gonna say that this is from a Chevy 350 V8. So once you look up the firing order diagram or the image on Google, you're gonna bring that up and take a look at it. And you're gonna be looking for the direction that the rotor underneath spins. In other words, what direction does the firing order go? Is it clockwise or counterclockwise? So in this case, we're looking at clockwise. And the firing order, remember that's the 18436572, all with dashes in between. That's your firing order. So which cylinders fire in which order? So we've got one. We know it's clockwise. So if this is one, then this is going to be eight. And so this spark plug wire is going to go to your number eight cylinder on your motor. And then four, three, six, five, seven, two, and then it repeats. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. And remember, this one goes to your ignition coil. Now, another thing to help you figure out which spark plug wire goes to where, often on a new or aftermarket set of spark plug wires is a little label. So for example, this one would go to cylinder eight, this one would go to cylinder three, cylinder two, etc. And you'll notice that depending on your vehicle specific set you buy, the different lengths will have to reach different parts of the engine bay where that cylinder is, and that's why they're labeled. Uh, if they're not labeled, all you have to do is basically lay them out, grab them all by one end, and figure out which one's longest to shortest, and figure out which cylinder on your motor is the furthest away from your distributor cap, and that's gonna be the order you're gonna have to use the spark plug wires. Now, if you have a coil pack like this, it's pretty easy. You don't have to worry about firing order at all. You just basically make sure that this spark plug wire that connects to here goes to cylinder two. So you just gotta look up a drawing and diagram of which cylinder is which on your motor. And um, cylinder two, three, cylinder one, and four. That's pretty easy. And then if you got coilover plugs, it's even easier because these are all the same for every single uh, cylinder. So you just basically have to make sure you put one in each cylinder. The main thing is make sure that the wiring going to it is correct. However, it's usually a loom that's connected and it can only reach so far and that's to this coil over plug and not another one. All right, now as promised, if you have coil over plugs, which is probably more relevant to newer cars today, uh, you can still inspect these things. So they don't have spark plug wires, but they do have a boot. Now, there may be some that are not replaceable and some that are. If you're not sure, just take a look at it, you know, do some inspecting and you can see how this rubber boot is flexing away. So that means I can peel that off and I'm, I'm safe and confident to know that this is gonna come off. So all you do is you give a little twist and just be gentle with it and pull it off. And there's your ignition coil part of the coilover plug and then you have your boot now first thing I would do is they kind of have the same rules as spark plug wires if these are really really old you know five six seven eight ten years old uh, 100,000 K 200,000 K and you haven't replaced these and you're having problems uh, showing misfires on your OBD2 scan tool this is probably one of the things that should be done you know this is a tune-up item uh, so what are we looking for same thing We've got rubber boots. Are they pliable, flexible? Is there any weird discolorations or burn marks where there's maybe a crack and it's arcing to the inside of the engine block or the spark plug well where this sits? And um, I wouldn't worry about resistance. Essentially, you just take this little wire out and if it's all intact, uh, then you're doing okay. So that if you buy a new pack of these, uh, these will come with it. Just replace it the same way that they were so you don't get them mixed up. Sometimes there's a little ball that goes in first. You just look at your old ones and compare. And then you take your new one and you can see that one end is way bigger than the other. So that's the one that's gonna go on here. And you simply just push it on and uh, should make a little click and be seated properly. And there you go. And um, same thing before, uh, if you want to test whether this is working, 
take it, undo the screw that holds this from the top of the motor, remove this from the engine, put another same size spark plug in the end, put the spark plug against the motor where it's grounded, something unpainted metal, and um, start the car. Make sure this is plugged in. And uh, if you're getting a spark, then you know that this boot is doing its job as well as the ignition coil. All right, that's another video from Way of the Wrench and how to become a gearhead. And hopefully you guys have learned a lot about spark plug wires. And now that you know what they are and what they do and how to inspect them and all that good stuff, going forward and becoming a gearhead is becoming easier and easier and uh, more enjoyable too. So if you enjoyed the video, I would appreciate a like and a subscribe. And until uh, next time, take it easy.